recently your first, I think, American production, right, with the Sister Williams. Yes. Um, and there seems to be an enormous amount of names involved, production companies involved with that. Was it a difficult one to get made? Or um, that just... That's a very special situation, yeah. in the sense that uh, I have created this, this, this production company a while ago, but I'm not like chasing for work. I created it just for myself to produce my films. But it happened like this, that in the last years I also created some festivals in Romania. I'm inviting a lot of guests. And I had invited Jacques Audiard for this festival. And he came, he doesn't really travel too much. And when he came to Romania, he asked us to organize this scouting for him. Because we have the same co-producer in France. I mean, like, this producer in France is my co-producer. So I knew him. Um, and somehow it was a special situation because he scouted in the States and he decided that he doesn't want to work there. He wanted to make like his American film in Europe. And he decided to split this between Spain and Romania. And uh, finally this is how we got to build pretty much all the interiors of this film. We built them back home. And it was good for us because it was like a very big production. And I knew we could do it, but it was good to prove you know, such a big budget film that we could do it. But it's not, uh, it's not part of a I don't know, series of jobs that we're looking for. Whenever something comes and we're not doing something else, it's, it's okay. Uh, and it wasn't very difficult to, to work with them because we knew part of the crew. We had the people that worked with me as well. I knew them a little bit. And then we are used to working and to producing a lot of foreign stuff there. I mean, like the crews are trained to work with the foreigners, and especially with the American films, they speak the language, they know what people want. So it's quite a bit. And are you also working on your own project at the moment as well? Listen, I'm, I'm producing a bit more now. And for example, last year we started again doing something which wasn't foreseen and expected, but um, there, is a, there is something called HBO Eastern Europe. And they started a while ago, way before uh, Amazon or Netflix, and there is some local legislation that encourage, encourages, they, they need to produce some local content, this is, this is the idea. And after years and years of uh, adapting foreign content, they wanted last year to produce something original from the scratch. And they hired us to be like the executive producers of this TV series. And also because I was having a small creative input on their work, since this is in Romania, it's an international co-production, but it's mostly spoken in Romania. Um, so now I think that I'm involved a little bit more on the short time in producing. I'm also producing some many younger directors. I'm also producing this second season, probably, of this TV series, and I will probably offer them um, a screenplay for another TV series based on one of the screenplays. So this is what I'm doing. Okay, so you're writing as well? I'm writing as well. I'm writing for some, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to revise a little bit the screenplays that we produce. Uh, whenever I'm asked to, and because it's, uh, I don't know, it's my name involved, and I think that I can bring this you know, advice and knowledge somehow to, to people and tell them that yeah, maybe it's better to be like this. And um, yes, this is what I'm doing besides a lot of other things. Um, I wonder if we could just talk a little bit about where we are in Marrakesh. Um, I love your accent. <laughs> um, what do you think makes this? such a wonderful city to host a film festival in. I look back. Turn the camera and look back. You know, it's 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 such a classy and posh kind of structure coming from the twenties, from the years of the colonialism. You know, it's very beautiful, it's very special, it's very glamorous. But um, I've been here before several times and I'm glad to see that this new direction that they is is the right one. They opened this way more to the audience. They were surprised, I think, to see that there is an audience. If you are brave enough to open the festival to Q&As and to introduce uh, the directors to 
the audience at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, some people will just stay there and they are curious to talk to people. So I think this is what, what makes it kind of special. And also that it's this mix, mix you know, the blend of culture. They are not too far away from Europe, but they are not Europeans, not too far away from the Middle East. But, you know. And so they are a little bit like a melting pot in the middle of everything. And this idea of bringing people from all over the place and the possibility of bringing such big names, as you know, big names attract a lot of attention. And this year they started treating things like um, a more professional festival in the sense that they have a market, they have a work in progress, they focus mostly on this kind of cinema, not on cinema in general, but like African, Middle East kind of cinema. So I think it's a very good direction. And this idea that they spin films uh, in this beautiful uh, market in the evening where people can come and watch the new I saw yesterday the new on all the local papers here. It's very funny to see the there in, in the middle of this other day. And your role being on the jury, you know, what do you look for in films? What are the aspects that you look at? Listen, uh, I've been to the jury here, but I'm not in the jury this time. This time I'm here just for a conversation that I'm going to have in, in one hour. When I was in the jury, when, whenever I'm in a jury, I, I don't know, um, you, actually what do you look for? You, you want to like the films. You look for some freshness and some honesty somehow in the sense that if you're a filmmaker, um, it's, you know, you are trained to see how somebody manipulates you. And whenever I see the manipulation, the film is not good enough. I like to see some finesse in this kind of, you know, your storytelling somehow. And besides this, I like, I don't know, watching this kind of films where people know what they talk about. Tell me a small story about, story about something that you know well, something that happened to you, a personal story about something that I don't know much. I don't have access, for example, to the life of these people who work with your lips now. I would be interested to know what have they done before coming here? What will they do afterwards? Whenever you know filmmakers try to, to be very general, it's not really something something interesting. But of course, when you are in a jury, you it's complicated because you are, you are with some other people. Sometimes it's easier to find things in common. Sometimes not. Has there been anything in uh, Marrakesh or elsewhere this year that you've seen that has particularly stood out? Um. I, uh, I, I've been to Cannes this year, so I saw some films there. We screen in, in October most of the films which are in the, the official selection of Cannes. Um, I, I'm not sure I can uh, name uh, like full films, but portions of films, yes, I've seen a lot of interesting things, and I think that one of the most interesting films that I've seen is uh, this new Gaspar Noé thing. Right. And I like it because, uh, precisely because it's not round, it's not smooth, it's not, you know, well crafted from the beginning, maybe. But my feeling with what I like is that it's, it's raw <laughs> and it's, it's bad in a sense. The way, you know, the same way he always is. But at the same time, there's something coming from the gut uh, with his films and with this one and the way it's shot and. Of course, it's, it's horrible at the same time, but uh, he does it in, um, I don't know, in a very natural and crafted way. You see that he's never worshipping it. This is who he is, this is what he wants to tell you. It's not a, a fairy tale in the world, it's the way it is. It's you know, like hell on earth and he's going to show it to you. And the music. And the music and the choreography. I have to say that that's, you know, that's an accomplishment in itself. The, the, the scenes at the beginning and all this dance and everything, that's, you know, really beautiful in itself. I want to watch the rest of the film. And you won the Palme d'Or in 2007 for yes. four months, three months, four months, three weeks and two days. And you were the first Romanian director to do so. So what did that prize mean to you in that sense? And how do you think prizes such as that can help give a platform for your films and, and help you in your career? Of course they help you in your career because all of a sudden it's a huge leap forward. It was just my second film and uh, it was already a happy accident that they allowed me in competition. 
you know, for such a thing to happen, you need to, to have a lot of things happening in the right time. First of all, you have to have a good film. And I started understanding that I was having a good film when I started showing it a little bit, like in late January, early February to some people in festivals. But then you need a lot of other things. You need them to like the film, and you need them to place the film in the right, right spot. And the film was not in competition from the beginning. The film started in Amsterdam Regard, as most of the films start at the beginning, they won't tell you, they take the time, they wait for the master. And it was uh, in addition with a lot of masters, I have to say. It was the 60th anniversary and everybody was ready for Khan. So somehow in the last minute, like last 24 hours before uh, announcing the decision, they see what they have and they promoted three or four films from as a turning out to competition. And then you need to have the right jury. Probably with the different jury, you know, it would have been a different run as who knows. Um, but it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference because the, the, the popularity, the notoriety of this award is so big that for, for a period this comes to you as well and you are like holding the whole world for one year, moving from here to there. Well, things happen to me that year miraculously because I just found that it really has a group that is drink this thing. Um, but you know, then what's, um, and yes, I have to say that that was the peak of this Romanian new wave somehow, but uh, this has started before. This has started before, but it shed the light on this generation of filmmakers who have very radical ideas about cinema. Coming, you know, from a country where um, there were no spectators whatsoever and no cinemas when we started, but we just not directly to the history of cinema. Let's not do titles for audience today. Let's think about, you know, it's it's always the context. And for us, the context was like this, that um, we work with very, very little money, but we had to become not only the writer directors of the film, but also the producers. And after that, ah, I will just release my film and sell my film. So, it's a way of doing everything because it's coming from a very, very small industry. And it shed a lot of light on the um, Romanian cinema, which, you know, we have some, some people call us the Romanian new wave, but honestly, we didn't have an earlier wave like this, never in history. The Romanian cinema was never considered to be like, you know, a school with, with some principles. We had a film here and there, a director, but we didn't have... Um, this kind of stage, steps like the Polish cinema or the Hungarian cinema, just to refer to people from the region. So all of a sudden this small miracle happened, a lot of course I have to say because of Khan, because Khan is such an instance that they have this, you know, this, this power of touching you and saying, this is valuable. And also because of the Khan, all of a sudden things are not relative anymore. Yes, you you qualify, you are okay. And this this was... I think a good thing for the whole generation of, the, of the Romanian filmmakers. But of course what's what's difficult is to continue for me and for us as well. Because uh, you know, people say, ah, okay, this is nice, it's been it's been like this with the Romanian new wave and it lasts for a period, but you know, it really lasted. And it's still more or less valid today and it's like twelve years later, it's fifteen years later after it started. So it set, I hope, the, the, the ground for people thinking more about what they do and about their kind of cinema. Was there a camaraderie between you and the other film clubs that were recognized? Um, the uh, um, not with all of them, but of course we all know each other. We had our great, gracious moments of solidarity way behind. You know, um, and I'm very good friend with some of them, even today. But you know how uh, this relationship between art, artists, romantics, whatever, people can be. Sometimes, um, you know, some people are more um, difficult, context is more difficult. But we had, a, we had a very good moment 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember, I think it was uh, 2006, 4, 5, 6, when um, we stood up 
as a generation at a table like this and we said look we need to change the legislation in this country about cinema because the rules of the game are not fair and especially for us and then we behaved like I don't know, uh, as a generation, a group of people with sharing the same values. And based on that change that we made then, all the other generations of Romanian younger filmmakers are still making films today. Because it was a major breakthrough, and from that moment on, they were having always some money for people who made their first one or two films, and there were some rules. Because, you know, people used to say that you're making films, everything is very subjective. Well, it is and it is not. Especially after you made one or two films, it's easier to say that I might bet on this guy, I might lose less money with this guy because, you know, he did these things, then on that guy who made only a lot of crappy, shitty things that nobody watched. And that was the, the principle of doing, you know, there needs to be some priority based on what you did, that's all.